Uh, yeah, it's Ask Dr. Ben. So next question is from Ellie. Good morning, Ellie. Uh, hello, Dr. Ben. We hope you don't mind this question as it's not COVID-19 related. I am fine with that. That sounds so nice right now. My 12-year-old son, Theo, is passionate about paleontology. Yes, excellent. And hopes to study it at university. Good. Yeah, good. I like that. Um, he and I are wondering if Mesozoic creatures suffered from viruses, or rather, if there's any evidence for this. Oh my gosh, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Um, when did viruses start doing their thing, and do we know? Fine. I can answer this from experience and reading. Yeah, well, like the coronavirus, I'm a little hit or miss on paleontology, but uh, I I'm pretty good on uh, some groups. So. Uh, here, I got trays and trays of these. Look at that. It's a gorgeous brachiopod. It's kind of like a worm in a neat folded up shell. This is actually from before the dinosaurs. Um, this is about 300 million years old, and they don't get going until, uh, I don't know, really strong going until like 100 million years after that. Or 150. Anyway, yeah, to your question. Yes, definitely. And here's how we know. So the direct evidence is that they've actually found some insects in amber, and these are all blood-sucking insects, and they actually have what look like virus particles inside of them of several different viruses. Now, the amber uh, in question comes from Burma, and the only thing that's different about these particular bugs in amber and any other ones is that... Um, one, they are about 100 million years old, so this is right in the middle of the heyday of the dinosaurs. They don't really go extinct until, um, yeah, one day 65 million years ago. Yeah, <laughs> really bad thing happened. Um, that's a lot of fun to read about <laughs> and study about at university. Um, so, yeah, we don't know that these were feasting on uh, dinosaurs or primitive mammals or whatever. Yeah, they could feast on whatever they wanted. But they're similar to uh, mosquitoes and biting midges. And, yeah, they found these things with, like, fungus growing off of them and um, parasites inside of them uh, and just all kinds of terrible deformities. And the only thing that's different about this batch of amber and any other one is that it's been carefully studied. At least once, yeah. <laughs> and most of the rest, people take that picture. But you've got to get get it really thin, and you've got to do electron microscope analysis on it to actually see the virus. So not everybody... I bet there's a lot more out there than we know about, and it would be really cool to see more of that. Now, um, bigger questions. Um, can viruses actually form fossils? This is an interesting question. Nobody has yet found a virus fossil for sure. But there are a couple ways to look at it. So one is that somebody actually did a paper uh, a couple years back where they took a virus and they actually, this is a virus that grows in water that's really hot and has a lot of dissolved rock in it so that it's constantly depositing little layers of rock on kind of the edge, like what you find in caves, how they get the uh, stalactites and stalagmites. They showed that you could actually make a nice little mold of these little tiny viruses. I forget which one it was, uh, maybe a Lipothrix virus, something like that. But uh, yeah, yeah. So it should be possible if you have perfect preservation or something like that. But it would require a really fine grain size in the sand because viruses are on average 100 nanometers and like just in dirt around you, it just seems like it's nothing, but it'll have great big, you know, chunks of silica and stuff in there. By great big, I mean several microns in size, like as big as a human cell or larger. And so you can't, what you're trying to do with a fossil is make a mold of the thing. And um, you've got to have just super, super fine uh, stuff to make that mold. But yeah, I'll bet, I'll bet it is possible. And I'll bet if you were to section through amber, something like that, you could probably find some trace of them. So uh, that's something that I've thought about doing and have not yet done. So maybe, I don't know, maybe you'll get to it before me. Other ways to look at this are phylogenetic trees, family histories of viruses. So we know that the virus changes at a particular rate, and we know that these particular viruses are related. And so you can say, well, okay, if the tree is this big, then that's like one year, two years, five, 10, 20. And there are some groups of DNA viruses uh, related to the herpes viruses 
that do seem to have a common origin that's back around 100 to 200 million years ago. And so, yeah, probably. And then the last little thing, um, we're not sure if it's viruses or what, but um, we're actually working on some fossil corals uh, here in my lab, and we've found several of them from one particular site that seem to have little problems that are going on, like little developmental problems. There'll be a little area where something bad is happening. It's like they've got an infection or something there. And they have to kind of rearrange all their insides around it. And um, they'll look just like another version of the coral, except for that one, you know, <laughs> it's like an abscess, something terrible. But uh, yeah, those are actually more common than you would think. And those could be bacteria or they could be viruses or something else. But uh, yeah, I would bet somewhere out there, some of those are viral and we just don't know which ones they are. And so, uh, yeah, we've definitely got viruses going back. Uh, those corals are about 300 million years ago. And probably viruses have been around even earlier than that. But actually proving it gets really hard because there's nothing that would be left of a virus except the mold of the outside of it um, after about 6 million years, we think, is the longest the DNA can per persist in any form. So... You would just be looking for shells of a virus or like a mold of the outside of a virus then and you'd have to be looking really close but i bet if somebody were to do this yeah i bet they'd find some really cool things and you could kind of uh, get a better picture of what viruses looked like throughout history because um it just feels like as long as there's been life there have probably been viruses they come from the same source they're just kind of parasites of life and uh yeah there are so many of them in the world that uh, they almost have to have been there. So there, these are good. Thank you for a non-COVID-19 uh, question. Fossil questions, very much welcome, especially if they have anything to do with brachiopods and corals, which I'm sure they don't, but <laughs> what the heck, we can try. Thanks very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben.